What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'll be showing you how I put a diesel heater in my remote home in the main fuel tank for full time living. Let's do it! So why have I decided to put a diesel heater in? Reason is because oh, LPG is getting harder and harder to get hold of. We all know that. So I'm just trying to minimise my use uh, of LPG. So I was using LPG for the heating which is a real big... Uh, draw of the LPG. Um, if I just use it for the three things that I'm now and I'm going to use it for, which is the cooking, my fridge and the hot water, it really is quite minimal how much I use. I reckon I'm going to get about five to six weeks, maybe maybe six, six or seven weeks out of out of two bottles, which means I haven't got to go fill up at, you know, at hardly, you know, ever <laughs> well, every six or seven weeks and I'm not reliant on it anymore you know? it's a weight off my mind because I don't want to be constantly worrying about LPG as it is uh, it is running it is running scarce at the moment so the first thing I had to do was find somewhere to put the actual diesel heater because the first place I wanted to put it was unsuitable because the, underneath the actual flooring was uh, the suspension and parts of the chassis which made it completely unsuitable which then meant removing my spare wheel which isn't the best of uh, options but I've never used uh, my spare wheel and touch wood I don't have to and I've got a breakdown uh, recovery service so we'll just go with that now I found a place to actually put the diesel heater it was time to drill the big hole out for the turret to fit now the reason I went with a turret was because it adds so much more protection, it adds such an air gap around everything and gives you so much more space to uh, allow the heat to dissipate. But as you can see we uh, run into a few issues whilst we were drilling the hole. So we went underneath and started drilling as well, um, but we come across something we didn't actually uh, expect to find. So for some unknown reason whilst cutting through the floor this is the floor so that's the outside bottom the underneath and then there's the foam but there's this half a sheet of this aluminium or thin steel just in in a random place don't know why but it's pretty good flooring once we finally got through the floor it was now time to neaten up the edges just because that that bit of steel that was inside of the metal that we found was uh, making a bit of a lip um, so yeah I had to get the Dremel out and then start sanding it down and keep trying and trying um, but slowly and surely we got there but it did take a it did take a little bit of time as you can see but Eureka we got it now came the fun part of putting the, the entire thing together and the beauty of this uh, turret allows the, the heat to dissipate but it does add a bit of an element of uh, a tight squeeze to things because you can't really get tools in in around the actual turret part um, with the walls so yeah I was using any any and every tool um, that I had and I'm not one for the proper tools so I use what I've got to hand to be fair so it, it took a while but it's just it's, it adds it's so much better f to, to use the turret so it was worth it in the end so I know I sound like a right fanboy with these turrets, but now everything was attached. It's, it's literally the case of you can attach everything all away from the hole and everything and then just literally thread it all through that one hole that you've drilled and then secure it to the floor and you're pretty much done. So as you can see, there's plenty of room around the diesel heater for the air to flow, so there's no problems there. And just just a case of screwing it down in place and that's the inside virtually done now the fun part of getting under the van and sorting all the uh, cables and the main thing of the which is the fuel pump because it ain't gonna work without that <laughs> so I need to make sure that was at like a 45 degree angle and there's quite a few holes in uh, the chassis and things everywhere uh, bolt holes so I could use them for cable ties so I just needed everything up and keep everything away from each other the last thing that had to be done inside was to make a vent hole to let all the hot air out from under the sofa so I went in dead centre in the cabinet uh, in the cabinet door so that would then vent straight through the middle of the motor so there we go diesel heater is in all wired up nicely just wired straight into there and there and then the control panel runs around the back and then to there. 
So yeah, and then I can't run that into the main air vents which are here and further along because there's not enough of gap for the pipe to get round down there and around the corner unfortunately. So I've opted for that central location. That's what it is. Just straight there and straight out there which will go straight down the middle of the motorhome. As you can see, there's <laughs> still loads of bits of bobs out at the moment. But that will heat up the middle, central part of the motorhome nicely. So yeah, bit of a bit of a per, you know, learning curve um, and whatnot. But the heat that comes out of that thing is amazing. The only job I've got to do now, because uh, we're just running into a jerry can underneath the motorhome, so all I need to do now is run the extra fuel line that I've bought and I'm waiting for a kit to arrive so I can open the header tank and then no fuel tank needed because it'll be running straight off my main line, uh, main fuel tank. Straight off the main line. So I'll then be able to carry two gas bottles and unlimited heat because I've always got off, always got a three quarters full diesel tank. So then the gas bottles will just be solely for hot water and cooking and the fridge. Yes, 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 yes. I wonder how long they will last now with no heating. See, it's all been put back together now. Um, the Me and John were doing it. And <laughs> I didn't film loads because my hands were covered in diesel and so was John's. Uh, we couldn't actually get the whole sender unit out because one, it was full of diesel. So that was gonna be, uh, diesel was gonna go everywhere. And two, it was hooked in with what I believe is the the level to, for the float to tell you how much is on your fuel in, in your fuel tank. Um, so yeah, so basically I held I held it in mid-air and then held some tissue underneath the hole that we drilled and then uh, yeah, just drilled through, made sure it was all clean, cleaned all the bits out the top of the hole and then flicked all the bits away as quick as possible and as make sure nothing got into the tank, no swarf, 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 I don't know, um, got in the tank, uh, yeah, basically done that then screwed it in because uh, it's got a thread it, and the hole was quite a tight hole that's what she said it just screwed all the way in then done it up on the back connected the pipes and then my header unit has to be it's like a pressurized one so you have to press it down and then put the clamp the, the metal ring around it and line it up with all the bolts so I'll overlay some pictures now um, to what we got. Um, but yeah, my hands were covered in diesel and so was John. So I wasn't going to be picking up a nice camera with diesel hands. Um, but yeah, it's all been put back together now. And what we've done is we just threaded the, the fuel. We then connected the fuel line on the top the top part. Turned, uh, we put a tester bit on first. Turned the engine on. Nothing leaked, nothing spurted out. So it's all put back to work together properly. And the fuel gauge works. I put 10 meters of fuel fuel pipe, proper fuel pipe. Uh, thread, started threading it down. It popped out underneath the van. Uh, and then John pulled it through. Um, I, I started, kept threading it and then uh, got it all the way through. And then it's just been tacked. It's been zip tied and threaded under the chassis and all along the body, away from, from the exhaust pipe. And yeah, all the way to the back. Um, all the way to the to the fuel pump. Uh, the fuel filter has been put on, so it's an easy area for me to get to, so I can change the fuel filters. I'll just change it every now and again. The one thing that did take a long time was actually priming, because uh, my um, diesel heater, for some reason, it doesn't want to go into prime mode. I'm pressing the buttons, and I've gone through like 20 different videos showing me all different ways and not one of them would go into prime mode. So I've just having to be turning it on and then let it try and fire up and then it's just pumping, pumping, pumping. 
it'll say no and then it'll try it again and then it'll turn off say error so i had to do that probably about eight to ten times so john had a good idea just to open the fuel tank whilst we we're all trying to pump it just so there's a free flow so there's no pressurized block so it took a fair while uh but now as we're sitting here right now it's on and it's running it's hot it's it's all good there's no leaks it's all neatened up it's all cable tied and yeah all good we were talking about maybe having a secondary tank um so we when we are like parked up maybe on a campsite or we're not going to be driving for a couple of days or we're parked up at a meetup or something we can then switch from the main tank to um another fuel tank with uh, red diesel so it's cheaper but then we worked out roughly this is very rough um, and obviously every every diesel heater is different and depending on how hot you run them they're different but they use about a liter and a half a day for a, for a whole day and if i stayed parked up for two weeks that on that basis is about 21 liters and you're saving about 40p a litre on red diesel to standard four core diesel. So then obviously 21 litres times by the 40p saving is less than a tenner. It's about £8.50 or something something like that. So for £8.50 to, to be saved over two weeks. And that's if I'm sat still for two weeks and I'm, you know, not moving anywhere. And I can have a, you know, secondary fuel tank running, like like just basically like just a jerry can outside or something. Because uh, I haven't got anywhere to really put a secondary fuel tank unless I bolt something underneath. But it has to be properly, uh, like armored, not armored, but properly crash rated. You could just have like a a jerry can floating under there because as soon as the MOT come along, they'd say no, that's not staying there. Um, so. For the sake of the amount of times I'm going to sit for two weeks, all right, I know we're in lockdown and we've had lockdowns and that, but for the sake of less than a tenner for sitting for two weeks, I'm just going to let it use my the main fuel out of my tank. I'm not really, I'm not going to start faffing around with you know splits and then secondary lines and then having to actually mess with diesel as well because there's a horrible stuff to mess with i don't like diesel you get it anywhere on on your or in your motorhome you're going to be buggered so no i'm just going to leave it straight main line to the diesel tank and then just go over there um should be should be fine really appreciate john helping me on that because there was no way i was going to be able to do that on my own uh, I was, I was a bit out of my depth there, but it, it went well. It looked, the the actual area that we had to go into for the for the sender unit looked ancient and not really decrepit on the outside, and we we were rummy and I don't know if we should even like go near it. It might just you know let sleeping dogs lie, but we did, and then underneath it's all pristine and fine. It's just the outsides you know just wear and tear, obviously. You know, it's a 15, 15, 16 year old van. There we go, guys. So that is me and my diesel heater, all fitted and hunky-dory. So I hope you enjoyed the video. It's not been a proper how-to video because I don't do them. I'm, uh, I'm no expert in any shape or form. I thought I'd just show you what I did and what seems to have worked for me. Um, if you've got any comments or questions or anything you want to say, drop them in the comments below and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Take it easy, guys. Bye.